shit. Hey friend, good morning. It's going to be a beautiful day out here in northwestern Ontario. It's going to be a cold one, but a good one. We got a bunch of new snow last night, which is exciting. And some really cold temperatures are coming up, so I'd like to get this thing wrapped up to protect from the elements and hopefully have a nice cozy place to camp out uh, on the frozen lake here. It's just beautiful. Now yesterday I came out uh, in the latter part of the day with the goal of uh, experimenting with some techniques and trying to see what would work. The chainsaw was basically the bane of my existence yesterday because, because it was so cold, the chain kept freezing to the bar and there wasn't enough torque to free it in that smaller chainsaw. I don't know if they, ha they have these in the hardware stores where you live, but uh, they certainly don't back on the left coast in BC. And that is this absolutely beautiful Nordic ice saw. <laughs> I mean, check this out. Look at this saw. This thing is a beast. This thing just looks like ready for battle. I mean, check this out. Look at the size of the teeth on this thing. These teeth are massive. If you like adventures like this, exploring in the snow, I've got a playlist for you down below of all my other winter videos, some of my favorite videos. Uh, so maybe cozy up next to a fireplace, get a coffee going and uh, enjoy this experience with me because uh, we're gonna make some sweet progress today.
So this is the hole yesterday and this is about three-ish, two and a half inches of ice formed in uh, under 24 hours. That's pretty cool. Check this out. <laughs> what that means is that this spot right here is definitely thick enough for me to stand on. That's kind of crazy. Hey friend, good morning. We've got some problems to address. Some of them are uh, bigger problems than others. Most of them are manageable. The first being, uh, it's New Year's Eve. <laughs> and that's exciting, but uh, the reason why it's a problem is that I wanted to have this finished so that way I could ring in the new year in the igloo to finish off our 10th year on YouTube. I wanted to, I don't know, I just thought that would be a fun way to finish things off. and ring in the new year sleeping in an igloo that just seems that seems fun to me so i i would like to get this thing done and that's the plan we got to address uh, a problem with my structure a problem that i'm assuming some of you have seen coming and we're gonna have to do some creative workarounds today to to wrap this thing up <laughs> must say I've made a bunch of mistakes so far and I've been refining the process and trying to learn new techniques uh, but that's that's what it's about for me it's uh it's exciting to challenge myself and to try a, a new structure build and to refine things along the way I've tried dozens of methods that have failed and uh, I'm sure I'm gonna glean some insights in the comments and that's that's always exciting for me and it's it's fun to just get out and try do a new thing that you haven't done before I will say if you've enjoyed this and you're new here welcome it's great to have you 
I'd love to have you stick around. I don't want you to miss out on some of the other great stuff we have coming up on the channel. Um, I'm building an electric motorcycle, a full-sized one. We do van life adventures. We go sailing. We're going to do more winter camping. I've got a playlist for you of other adventures that I think you might really like if you've enjoyed this one. With that being said, let's address some of the problems here because I'm sure some of you have been wondering, how are you going to build the roof? I have been wondering this as well. When I got into this, I was naive about the weight of the blocks. I was expecting them to be easier to manipulate. Uh, they're quite heavy, so basically trying to... I wanted to do a domed roof. That, that was I wanted to do an authentic domed roof. That is challenging for a couple reasons. Uh, the way that the traditional Inuit would make these is out of snow. So the snow we have right now is way too powdery, so it's not sticking together in blocks. So they would cut out blocks out of crustier snow and make the igloos out of that. And how they would get the domed roof is they would cut a ramp, like a, a ramp out of the first layer of blocks, so that way their second layer would slowly stack up, kind of like an ice cream cone from a soft serve machine, and it would slowly spiral in and then you could put the top block on. So I honestly thought I was gonna be able to replicate something like that, but I didn't wanna cut that whole first layer of blocks. So I was gonna start doing tapered cuts, uh, which I think would work, but I'd have to, the blocks are so heavy that they keep sliding on tapered cuts. I did some practices, so I'd have to brace them with sticks. And uh, I think that would take a lot more time than I have to get this thing done. So we're gonna make a compromise and I'm gonna put up my last layer of blocks here. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up with like a hybrid roof system that isn't, that isn't traditional igloo shape, which is a little bit of a bummer to me, but hopefully should have some good uh, insulating value. And that will be what uh, covers off our structures. Now it's not a huge problem and it kind of just comes down to aesthetics at a certain point, uh, especially since I'm making them, making this igloo out of non-traditional methods in the first place. It's ice blocks, not snow. So I was expecting that the chainsaw was gonna make this pretty quick work, but the chain, when it dips into the water, freezes really quickly. So I'm having to set it down and then quickly keep spinning up the chain. And if I leave it sitting for 15 minutes, it's frozen solid and then it's done for the day. So instead of cutting out blocks, I've been using my hand saw and that's been working well. And then I've been using the chainsaw to shape the blocks to get some of the edges more square because it is challenging to get the blocks square with the big hand saw. And so shaping the blocks is going better with the chainsaw because it's not getting as wet. It's that water from the lake that really freezes it up quickly. <laughs> Okay, so this is what the entryway is gonna be like. I gotta harvest a block for right here and I'll lay one flat across, pack this in with snow. Uh, the wind direction is often this way across the lake here where I am. So that's why the entrance is kind of facing this way so that way wind doesn't come in and we'll, we'll block it. But This monster right here should be the last ice block that I harvest. Uh, 
<laughs> it's monstrous. I got to shape it a little bit here. This is going to go over my doorway. And uh, I realize I can appreciate at this point if some of you are concerned seeing me around water in a frozen lake. That seems to make sense. And I also understand if you express that concern in comments down below that that makes sense. I can respect that you're concerned. Uh, rightly so. It is a serious thing what I'm doing, even though I'm having fun. You need to respect ice like the ocean, like nature. You need to respect that a lot can go bad very quickly. So I can assure you, I wouldn't be participating in this activity if I wasn't somewhat okay with the idea that I could fall in. That is to say, thank you for your concern. I'm not going to stop because you're concerned, but I understand it. Um, and uh, I'm willing to accept that risk on myself and I have contingency plans, I have safety ropes, I have measures that I'm willing to take, but don't think I'm just dancing around here on the ice having fun without at least acknowledging that, uh, that this could be deadly for me in, uh, if certain events unfold. And I'm willing to admit that I definitely think in the headspace that the driving around in cars that we do on a day-to-day -day basis is one of the most deadly things we do as humans. So for me, understanding that there is risk and then being in those environments, I'm okay with that, at least with the understanding that there is risk. If you do ever plan to go out on ice, I recommend being familiar with the 110 one principle and just a general understanding of how fast things can go very bad and how little time you have if you do end up getting soaked or fall on the ice. That big block I just cut is gonna go right up here in between the doorway. That's crazy. A half hour. Look at that. This was ugly on the back side. Oh, and this one cracked too. Oh, great. All that work for nothing. blocks are done yeah it looks awesome <laughs>
Oh my goodness. We are actually pulling this off. I am so stoked. <laughs> oh, we're gonna sleep so good tonight. Oh man. Hey friend, welcome to the igloo. It's completed. Our roof is a uh, section of logs and some tarp and then a bunch of snow piled on top and that snow on top is actually going to create a bunch of really good insulation and all the sticks i kind of notched into that top section of ice and so we've got a really sturdy thing going on here it's not as pretty as i was hoping from the inside but from the outside it actually came together decently well which is pretty satisfying when it's uh taken as many hours to put together to have a finished structure that i'm actually proud of you can tell even with just my candles it's already getting warmer in here because my camera gear is condensating from being in the super cold outside to being in the slightly less cold inside and uh we're gonna hunker down and spend the night here i'll show you some finished shots of the igloo right now that i'll take tomorrow morning when we wake up and there's daylight again but from what i can see with my headlamp i'm uh i'm quite excited so let's uh let's get the bed situation going tyler's gonna be here any minute and uh we're gonna have a great night's sleep because I am just absolutely spent. I am so tired. Dude, we're gonna do so well. <laughs> Dude, the light straight, this is sick. Oh man. This is like luxury. Oh, I'm gonna drop my I guess these blankets are a fire hazard, so let's not be stupid. Now you might be asking yourself uh, how much work it took to convince another person to sleep here with me. That's one thing that I appreciate about Tyler is it it really did not take not much convincing. Much at all. <laughs> Would you review accommodations thus far? Oh, like nine out of ten. Nine out of ten, for sure. I think the only thing we're missing is a door. Well, there's the foam block. There you go. How much do you want? <laughs> <laughs> I should ask you for a surf board. I was kind of asking to see just how much you poured. Are we, is this a one swigger or are we oh, going to sit? I don't know about that. I think I'm more than sipping. Okay, we'll sit. As generic of rum as it gets. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This is definitely one of the coolest ways to bring in 2022 that I can think of. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't think of anything better. No, no, this is pretty legendary. I wonder what percentage of humans alive have spent nights sleeping in igloos. Low. 
<laughs> low percentage. <laughs> Not many. That's perfect. <laughs> it's like, it's like it's a scrap piece of insulation. Fits perfect. I mean, I definitely woke up a few times, but I didn't like stay awake for very long, so. Yep. Hardest part was just sleeping in this morning until we got sun. Yeah, that was the hardest part. Look at this. Wow. Whew. Oh, wow. We did it. <laughs> Well, friend, I must say I'm quite pleased this morning, uh, feeling very grateful and satisfied, quite proud of the structure that I've built. I've got to get a fire going here to get some warmth into my fingers and get some food in my belly. Uh, as far as survival structures go, this is, a, this is a pretty neat new method to add to the repertoire. If I wanted to spend weeks out here camping, ice fishing, that kind of thing, this is definitely the structure I'd go for. I'm open to some brainstorming about ways to do a structure this big in diameter but a roof without sticks, a roof without logs, because uh, that's the one limiting factor is I definitely need some trees nearby that I have access to and permission to cut down to use for uh, the roofing. But other than that, it worked really well. Temperature wise, <laughs> admittedly, we do need to insulate some of the cracks a little bit more. It became pretty obvious at nighttime where the drafts were coming from in the rush of getting it done in time. We left some cracks open and that definitely made us lose a bunch of heat. So as far as comfort level, I definitely sleep better in a Quincy. Like hands down, that is just the warmest winter structure that I know how to build. And the insulation value is amazing. It's nice, small and compact. But if you actually like want to hang out with some friends, fishing, prepping meals, this is the way to do it if you don't have a hot tent. Um, maybe I should invest in a hot tent in the future. If you have other ideas of what you'd like me to try, let me know. That's going to be it for this one. Thanks for coming along on this big adventure. I've had a lot of fun bringing you with me. I'll catch you in the next one. And remember... Life's better when you make stuff. It's important for me now to also let you know that if you want to keep watching my stuff, I've got a playlist here for you. And I want to say a massive thank you to the channel members of our channel, those who've clicked that join button. They got little badges next to their names in the comments. Say thank you to them because they're the people that help make videos like this happen. And that's, uh, that's really special to me. You can join for the price of a cup of coffee, get special videos. I've got a special video, extended edition, even longer, lots of talking, talking through all the details of this one, but that's it for this one, goodbye.